I'm happy, I'm happy here today, I'm really happy to be here today, you know what I mean? It's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's only me, hey, me, Nanny, Big G, and then we've got the Atom Brothers and, and Ricky's son, brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> Preferential treatment, mate. Beautiful. It's just uh, very fortunate. Yeah, that's Shut up. Playing the dime, right? <laughs> this is that four kilos worth of ass, Better than fucking when you get the cut, you did, Ed. <laughs> you just get worried when you get that Vaseline out in the flat, don't you, mate? You got hair about a lot. <laughs> Until you've got the measure, then you can stiffen the shots up a little bit more. You've never seen this kid, you know, yeah. if he's out like Dave, he could be a bit unconventional, so... Yeah. You know what I mean? Well done, boy. Well done, Danny. Well done. Well done, Campbell. I don't want anything less. <laughs> <laughs> right, after Saturday night, have you stopped smiling? Oh, we started? Yeah, we started. Yeah, I'm alright, yeah. Well, I'm Sorry. saying, have you stopped smiling though? Yeah, I'm very happy about Saturday. I'm even happy about today. Had a great day at Ricky's gym. Like I said earlier, I'm still, I still, I'm still really buzzing to go and see Ricky Hatton every time I see him, even though it's like the hundredth time. It's Ricky <laughs> Hatton, innit? You know, nice to meet uh, Matthew Hatton and his son, uh, Ricky's son. Had a good day today. You know, Saturday's been and gone now. I'm finally starting to think, you know what? I can't live off that Nick Webb knockout forever, can I? So we're on to, on to the next one and. Uh, we're underway with, with Danny's getting ready for, Danny for September now. Well, before we talk about Danny, we have got to talk about Nick Webb because it was a fantastic punch and it is probably going to help you to have this break that you you, you know you, you feel you need because obviously you're now fresh in everyone's, in, in everyone's public eye but for the right reasons now because, you know, everyone knew you were a tough guy but, you know, could you dish it out? And you've just proved that you can dish it out, and you took a guy out who was 12 and 0 with 10 knockouts. And I know you say, oh, he was nothing, but yeah. that was a that was a big thing. You were a massive underdog. Yeah, I finally cemented my place um, in the British heavyweight title mix. You know, that Nick Webb win is, is I proved now I'm British title level. You know what I mean? Mm. With all my losses, people saying you're British title level after your losses, but losses don't define where you're at. You can't, you can never really, you can't judge yourself and. Off a loss, I've got a win now against someone who was 12 and 0, 10 knockouts. He was well in the British title, mate. He's going to fight Joe Rose for the Commonwealth. I'm just not smiting for rounds without training. <laughs> now that's what I was going to get onto so, as well. So I can't be that bad, can I? I always knew the talent was there. But Saturday night, I was so relaxed because I thought, you know what, if I don't win, my career's over. I just went in there with a the thought, you know what, fuck this. Let's just go in there, relax. I had a little game plan and let's stick to it and let him. And let me hands go when the time comes. Well, I I'd spoke to you, I don't know, probably about 10 days before that. And was that on the cards? Because you did mention it. You said on, yep. in the video, you know, Eddie Earns, if that Nick Webb wants someone, I'm here. You know what? After, after I spoke to you about the Nick Webb fight, I messaged Eddie Earns, I think, everything the day after and said, look, I'll take the Nick Webb fight yeah. if you want me to have it. And um, very lucky he got back in touch and he got made really quickly, you know. I think I think Nick Webb and his team knew I was out of shape and they just they, they wanted to use me as a springboard, but I've got a bit of experience now, you know what I mean, as a fighter. And Nick Webb wasn't ready for me. As daft as it sounds, even though he's the older, more experienced man, he he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for me. Uh, it was more experience. It's more experience in terms of the number of fights as an amateur and pro. But he hasn't been where I've been. Tony Oka took me to an horrible place. Yeah. So did Luis Ortiz. Dylan White took me ten rounds. So you know, as well as people say you shouldn't have been in those fights, do you think those fights are what are going to help you move forward? Do you think you're going to take lessons from from those defeats? Absolutely. Um, people say, oh, they're not good for them fights, you put a lot of miles on your clock. But because I've not had many amateur fights, really, I've not put that many miles on my clock, really. I, I don't know I took an idea in a few of them, but I've learnt a lot. I've learnt really important things that you, that you can't get in the gym. Mm. Because Luis Ortiz taught me patience. That's what <coughs> Luis Ortiz taught me. He taught me all about patience. Uh, and 
I wouldn't have watched Louis Ortiz, I wouldn't have been in it wearing the style I did on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. I think I'd have, been, I'd have got in it without there if I'm actually just a much fitter, stronger man than him. But Louis Ortiz taught me about patience. You know, the first three rounds people saying, oh, he's not throwing any punches again. Well, that fight, I was never going to win on points that fight. I don't no. want to win points. I don't want to win fights on points. I never want to win a fight on points. I want to knock everybody out if I can. Mm -hmm. So, I boxed Nick Webb knowing for a while. I was, I, my plan was stopping after seven or eight rounds. I didn't think it would get to me that early, but I had a plan then. My plan wasn't to go out there like a fucking blow ass fly throwing loads of punches early on. That wasn't the plan. The plan was, I knew we'd blow up. So, I'm not going to run into an 18 and a half so man early on getting caught taking silly shots, trying myself out. So, I had a game plan. I stuck to it. I'm really happy. And the likes of Lewis Ortiz, Tony Oka, Dylan White, Lenroy Thomas, even the 12 rounder I did with him, they, they've all got me to where I'm at now, which is a very. A, a good, steady professional, you know what I mean? Well, now, now I need to get fit in at other parts of my game. Are you going to do very that? Good. Yeah, you know, that's the plan now, yeah. Obviously, at the minute, I'm having a bit of time off, like I said, I would anyway, win, lose, or draw. Mm -hmm. I have some time off coaching Danny. In coaching Danny, I'm seeing things from another perspective now. I'm telling him what is right, and then I think, you know what, I'm telling him to do that. Why am I not doing it? And I'm doing it. <laughs> now I'm starting doing it myself, and whether I was doing things that I tell him to do, I said, well, I just hit him in the middle of the body, just hit him anyway. And I started hitting him <laughs> with the body anyway, I wasn't even thinking. Things I tell him, and I hear, I hear my own voice in my head, what I, what I tell him to do, and I started doing it. So I'm just, I'm becoming now a good round of professional fighter, that's what, that's what I am now, I think. Yeah. And Danny, how did you find that today? Obviously, you, uh, you had the eyes of uh, the Hatton clan on yeah. your you know, son you're in the ring with, uh, his uncle and yeah. his dad there watching you closely. I was nervous, definitely, but after a bit you just get, get into it, got into spar, and then had a good spar. I hope to do it again, it was good. Yeah? Yeah. D uh, and Dave, were you proud of him? Yeah, very. It was, it was yeah, a good spar, right? wasn't it? It was, it was good very four good rounds. Spar. Campbell's about 17 months older than Danny, uh, but Danny's more experienced and, and maybe a weight class above. He's about three kilo of you. Mm -hmm. It was a very good spar. Um, Danny just does what I say, he listens and he does things. I'm not saying I know everything or I'm correct with everything, but I'm on the outside looking in so I can see what's going on. So if I, if I say to, to do something to Danny, he can do it straight away and that's a very good talent to have. Not a lot of people can do that. I did notice that when you were shouting things out, he was reacting, which is good that because sometimes, you know, yeah. he'll say something and, and the fighter will ignore it and then come back to the corner and you'll be like, well, why didn't you do what I did? What it's I not, told you to do? It's not for me to sit here now and say Danny did this to Campbell or, or whatever that, but. It was just a really good spar, you know. I'm not, mm. no, I'm not saying anyone got the upper hand or anyone else. It was a good spar. No, it, it, was, it was just a good spar, you know. Yeah. Um, something that they both got a lot out of. And like I say, for Danny, that, that's like a, that's, that was another fight for him. That was a fight, and yeah. you know that he'll improve as much. Well, as wasn't as Danny? Wouldn't you tell me that was one of your first spars back for probably what yeah, 12 months? Yeah, that was probably a good, a proper spar that I've had in a while, really. That's not been in a field, so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a bit different. But in this weather, training in fields might, might, might not be yeah. too bad. Sorry, yeah. He's been doing a lot. He's been doing a bit of sparring in the field, a bit of open stuff. He's been doing a bit of sprinting, hasn't he as well? Yeah, he spars with professionals. He spars with amateurs. He spars with he spars with people who just keep fit. Who think he spars with everybody because you can always learn. It doesn't matter where you train. You can train in a gym, in a field. I can train in KFC car park where we're at right now. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's what you're being taught, and it's what it's what you're being shown in the training, not where you've been training. I could I could I could get my mate here in front and I could train there, but she'd never be able to do it because she because she can't fight. I mean, well she might be able to but do you know what I mean? If you can't do it you can't do it. I could train him anyway and he's and he, and he's still gonna do what he's gonna do because he's a good kid, do you know what I mean? So it doesn't matter where you train or or, or whatever. So this is what's gonna keep you occupied for the next few months? Yeah this kid Danny. I think I think we're gonna have a very successful go at it with it with the amateurs coming up. I'm I'm gonna from Monday I'm gonna start training with him again and ticking it over a bit of running with him where I can keep up with so I can keep up with the weights and stuff and my focus I said to Eddie last night, I messaged him, I was, we were talking to him and I said I'll give you a message on a seventeen and a half stone and then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna take a stone off and that'll take me two months, two and a half months. And I'll drop my message and I'll, and I'll see what shows are coming up and I'll, and we'll put a little plan together when I get there. So so yeah, I'm gonna How did you I mean it was a massive occasion and I think you know, I was at a boxing show in Middleton, uh, one of the Black Flash shows, and that's all everyone was talking about. Everyone was so, so happy for you. And it seemed like, you know, uh, I was on social media, you know, with the IFL and all that. I don't think there was a bad word that anyone had to say about, you know, you on that night, because yep. a lot of people were ifing and ahhing, umming and ahhing about you, perhaps taking that fight, saying, oh, he's not ready, he's, you know, he's this or that. 
and then you went and proved everyone wrong and suddenly you know you everyone's sweet out again yeah it's nice um obviously it's nice that people say nice things you know that's that's the nice thing about winning yeah, yeah. Credit, you know, I, I get paid when all those. Obviously, there's a win bonus every day, but usually, you, know, you get paid when all those. You, you do whatever, and um, when you win, everyone, everyone loves you for it again. You know? You're emotional, though, aren't you? Yeah, you know, it wasn't it wasn't happiness or sadness, it's pure relief. Because yeah. I knew that win on Saturday night changed my life. It has really, really will change my life. I should be getting paid proper money now. It was a genuine rocky story that last night, wasn't it? A massive underdog. And that one big punch, suddenly... I wasn't an underdog in my eyes, though. No, but you were in everyone else's. Yeah, but I don't understand why. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I thought I should Because he was 12 and 0, mate. Yeah, I know, but I I, um, I believe in my ability, and I always knew I was going to be in it, web. I always knew. I was, on the day of the fight, I had doubts, and I was feeling a bit like, I don't really want to fight, this and that, but... 30 seconds in, I wish I could have lumped on myself. I wish I could have had a better myself when he's... I knew straight away I was going to win. I knew I was too strong for him. You know, as if, you know when you get little, I know I'm getting experience now, so I can read things and mm. I know I know things now. So, um, but yeah, it was nice. It was was emotional because there was about seven or eight thousand, and all of them were stood on the feet clapping and cheering. And um, you know, you know, not many people get to. Experience I think they're all that. stood on the feet at Babe Station as well, weren't they, mate? Yeah, they. Um, little messages for you. They are going down soon. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> You know, all of them, so Babe Station support me, you got Lewis out of One Direction, he's tweeting <laughs> me as well, and then, and then you got thousands of just boxing fans as well, like, if I want to change the other Babe Station, One Direction, do you know what I mean, <laughs> so it's crazy. I think I prefer Babe Station, <laughs> <laughs> following me, mate. But let's, you, tell me something, when did when did you have to sign your first autograph? Because you were telling me it took you about an hour to get from the changing room, uh, for, from the ring to the changing rooms. Yeah, like, I was just, it's really nice. So yeah, when did it happen though? When did that? When when did taking you? Taking pictures. It yeah, when the people first start. You know, was that after the Dylan White Probably fight? Probably the Dylan White fight. Yeah, but mm. now, I, but when I go to the boxing it now I can't move. No. It took me an hour to move about 15 yards, <laughs> which is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Do you know what I mean? I do a lot of this. I'm like I'm like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm there for now giving it all that. And you're like fuck. You know, my arms killing. But it's, I'd rather be doing that than than uh, not doing anything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's nice and. I think, I still think my, obviously the Nick Webwin obviously changes things a little bit, obviously people might think, you know what, you can fight a little bit now, but my popularity is still far exceeds my boxing ability, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think and I hope that it will forever do that, even if one day I became a world champion, you know, it's um, it's uh, it's an amazing thing. Yeah, well, uh, listen, uh, like I said, I thoroughly enjoyed it, I, I'm, I'm so happy for you, because I was a little bit, you know, so I, I was chatting to you, you were fighting Lee Carter. Yep. And as good as Lee is, he's not on the level that the, the kid you just beat. Yep. So, you know, I, I knew there was no issue with uh, with you and Lee. But yep. when I found out, I thought, hmm, because I've seen you running back with the pads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I was thinking, <laughs> I'm not quite sure you're ready. Yep. But, you you know, you said you were and uh, you proved that you were. and. I, I just wish you all the, uh, the look for the future, mate. Thank you very much. And yeah. Danny, and same for you, mate. Cheers. Like I say, championships, new season starts September, <laughs> championships October. Yep. Looking forward to it. We've got another session tonight. Chest and arms at <laughs> five o'clock. No two rest for the wicked. Two sessions yeah. tomorrow. You might do one Saturday. You know, there's no, um, I'm not the greatest trainer in the world. I don't do a lot, of, but but he fucking will. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> but um, you know, I still he's got a million times talent I've got, and if he really if he keeps putting the work in, keeps doing as he as, as I ask of him to do, I, I I think he'll be British champion by the time he's 21. People think that he's just um, you're putting a massive target on this kid's yeah, back now, you know. No, but as an amateur, he's got 21 months left as an amateur. He's going to turn pro at 18 years of age. That's the plan. Yeah. Over three tools, he's going to, I think he'll struggle. I've told him, I said, I think to win fights over three tools, it's not really his thing. He's very physically strong and he's very patient, good boxer. Over three tools, it's not really his thing. What was, he fight? was that four threes you that were was doing? Four threes. Threes, yeah. Yeah. And that's minimum. He was coming on strong, he'd get better over six, eight, and ten, even now at 16. Mm. So I put, I do put the pressure on him, but it's nothing I don't think, it's nothing he can't back up and handle. Mm. People just think he's my mate and that's why we're doing it, but I wouldn't just take on anybody. 
I genuinely look at him and I think, you know what? That's my retirement fund. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the twenty five percent, aren't you, mate? Twenty five percent. No, he he, he can. Uh, you got to breed confidence. You got to give him confidence as well. Yeah. You know, he's not he's not the most confident in the world, but you got to give him confidence. But at the same time, I'd never lie to him. He can do anything he puts. He can do anything he puts his mind to. If he does as I tell him to do, and I don't say that in a horrible way or a, or a big other way, but I'm just saying, if he does what I tell him to do, keep keep doing what we're doing. He's getting better all the time. The improvement I've seen in him in the three months we've worked together is unbelievable. And if he can keep improving like that every three months for the next five mm. years, he might be world champion by the time he's 21. Never mind, fucking British. <laughs> 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 we'll leave on that note. Listen, congratulations on both of you. Amazing, great spa for you, and a fantastic big overhand right for you last Saturday night, mate. Thank well you done. Much later. See you later. Final word? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you later, lads. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.